Hey, good morning, mummies. Hello. Good morning, Eamon. Um, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, Eamon. Yeah. Perfect, Eamon. Um, I'm so happy to have you here. We like to have a really wide variety of speakers and so on. And it's so nice to um, have you on board to talk about chiropractic care. And I think what I'd like to start with is a little bit cheeky, but we have a lot of mummies who don't understand necessarily the difference mm. between an osteopath and a chiropractor mm. and a physiotherapist. Mm. Who to see for what? So if you could um, actually maybe unshare so we can see your face. Okay. And talk us a little bit, talk through yeah. you, what your um, sort of trajectory is mm. or was, and then what the difference is between those three modalities that our mummies yeah. want to tap into. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, I've always, I've always, I'm a bump eyes mummy, obviously. <laughs> and um, I've always just loved this community and how it brings all the mothers together. So thank you so much for having me. Um, so I, we do get this question in clinic a lot. Like, why should I come see a chiropractor? Should I just go see an osteopath and a physio? And my simplest answer, to be honest, is it doesn't matter what you choose. Choose one thing and please do something if you think feel like there's a concern for yourself when you're pregnant or for your baby. Whether you mm -hmm. come see me, whether you go down the road and see Gregory at, um, uh, you know, at the osteopathic center or you, when you're pregnant and you go see Preet for a physio, I am supportive of everyone and doing that body work. What differentiates us though is with chiropractic, first of all, obviously with the prenatal mummies, is we do the Webster's protocol. Okay. Yeah. So the Webster's protocol is the gold standard. And even if you talk to the gynecologist who are quite well versed in the holistic modalities of how body work works uh, for prenatal mothers, is they will say, go find someone who does Webster's protocol and usually yeah. it's a chiropractor and they will come see us. Okay. So that's the gold standard to get everything in the pelvis moving and getting the body ready. So as a chiropractor, if you think of just us as electricians of the human body who are mm -hmm. looking at how well the signals are going to yeah. the brain, from the brain and to the rest of the spine and how well that body is moving and if there are any blockages anywhere so we can amp that light up okay, mm -hmm. in your pelvis. <laughs> um, to and <clears throat> So that is where we come in and get everything moving if it's shifted in the wrong way or if there's any un if you're uncomfortable we bring you at ease bring you in that mode of rest and digest because we don't want fight or flight when you're pregnant or we don't want fight or flight in a newborn baby um so we do that with gentle adjustments and rexus protocol and that's what really sets us apart with when it comes to chiropractics versus the physiotherapist versus the osteopath it's mm -hmm. that those adjustments and also obviously a lot of training that goes behind it um at this point i am one of the only um certified well with a proper postgrad degree in pediatric chiropractic mm -hmm. so um obviously there's a lot of like studies and constant studying and um, training and upskilling that goes behind it as well okay so tell us a little bit about your training because uh, that's yeah. i think there's a difference between chiropractors who are trained in the us and australia and mm. the not always on the same level yeah so obviously this chiropractic college is so i'm from new zealand and i always say this if i speak really really fast please tell me because i will slow down yeah. Oh, no worries. <laughs> yeah. so um new zealand so it you know what it comes down to the technique that they're learning at school uh versus australian so versus us canada and australia new zealand um and a lot of the philosophy of why we do what we do and backed with the science um, so I studied at New Zealand College of Chiropractic and um, and then I did my postgraduate in pediatric chiropractic in Melbourne. Um, so um, a lot of the philosophy of why we do what we do backed with the science of, well, this is what's going on with this baby in terms of reflux or a cerebral palsy. This is how you support them mm -hmm. versus, and this is how you incorporate every other modality versus check like just adjust and yeah I, I there's a lot I can speak for the training of the US and the Canadians there's oh, no, really absolutely. really great amazing chiropractors out there who have been trained there but that's what like really um, puts us apart in New Zealand um it, it's the philosophy and the science that is there okay I love them yeah 
I will come back to reflux because we have a mom in the asked me about that yesterday and some ideas and I said you know different modalities try them all kind of thing and I did chiropractic as well so that would be an thing uh, for you to talk a little bit about right well, um I'll we'll dive right in I think right. go through your presentation and then mummies who are on the call feel free to ask questions you can put them in the chat if you don't want to or if you can't speak um up um so then we will I will read it to Eamon and and she will then um yes that's great so, well, anyways, well, hello and welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me here. We've obviously already touched base on, um, uh, you know, about myself. Um, I am, my name is Eamon. I am a graduate of um, New Zealand College of Chiropractic. And then I did my postgrad in pedi pediatric chiropractic from Melbourne. I am also Webster certified. Um, and uh, that comes from the US because that's the only one of the only places that does um, Webster certification. Mm -hmm. um, why chiropractic? Obviously, my help, my focus is always to help everybody at all stages of life to reach their full potential. I don't believe living at the bare minimum. I always want you to thrive with chiropractic care, but obviously I have that particular interest in pediatrics and pregnancy care. And um, because I truly believe that if when you're in the womb, that is when that journey starts. And there's so much education around, you know, looking after yourself and looking after the baby. And it's not just you're going to term and now it's just focus on, you know, listening to music. So this happens and, you know, doing yoga. And so uh, I think chiropractic care can really add that value when you do everything at ease um, um, through when in your pregnancy. Um, there's obviously a lot of options available out there to pregnant women, uh, and one of them being chiropractic care. So we have chiropractic care. We have obviously um, communities like um, Bumpwise, where you have like a doula or midwife on your birth team. I'm a big advocate of people writing their birth plans and mm -hmm. a big, big advocate of having a some sort of like a doula, midwife, or birth worker on their team. I am constantly driving that message at in practice that do you have someone have you done your birth classes have you gotten that holistic information that you need not just oh I heard it through someone I'm just I'm gonna be okay we're gonna wing it like, you don't try to wing it no <laughs> winging does not work in our experience and it actually yeah. starts with you know figuring out what do I want out of this birth Mm. to me and is my care provider and even the hospital are they supportive of that do they have the facilities yeah. uh that I'm looking for and so on and there's a big big difference and as soon yeah. as we see all the time yeah. now Diana and I have supported over 700 births uh you yeah. know we've worked here a long time we know the ins and outs of all the doctors yeah. yes and so on so that is really important mm. and, the doula is yeah is just walking alongside you in pregnancy and postpartum then as I well agree. i agree Wait, because it can you. be such a vulnerable time no so why would you not want someone who knows it all who is uh, doing it who can actually just be like i got this you just focus on breathing yeah. through this okay um because it just i don't believe in winging it and you can we we, we did like a birth stories event at our work and this lady had five different births and each one, she went through all of them telling us birth stories. And she's like, if I thought I wasn't prepared for one, you're not prepared for what happened at my fifth birth. Okay. So, yeah. And you're like, oh, so I promise you having that support team around you, you're never going to be disappointed. Even yeah. if it just involved, oh, she massaged my legs through that. Yeah. No, and and we uh, uh, on the on the flip side, we always recommend that moms do body work as well because I think it's really important that you pre prepare. Birth is a big event, um, and mm. everybody has in a certain way when they run a marathon, but mm. <laughs> or do a, a race or some of some sorts. But um, with um, birth, they're often not so prepared, and they don't understand the the importance of the body being in balance and everything being aligned, and and so on. And then they will mm. birth with so much more ease mm, mm, yeah correct we hear wonderful stories at work all the time with w women with that body work versus when they don't and mm. the difference is just it's it's the proof yeah. is in the pudding <laughs> so we know this yeah um obviously the other options that we have is staying active you know prenatal yoga whether it be exercise just really focusing on op op opening up that pelvis to prepare for what birth because of that and 
yoga, Pilates, exercise gives you that emotional empowerment as well that you can do this. It gives you a little bit of time out that I'm going to do, go do this. I know how my body works. I know where, what my weakness is or where my strengths are and how to really hone in on that when times comes out for that labor and delivery. Um, and it, managing stress, a really, really big one. Um, just yeah, get help if you need that, okay? Uh, meditation, prayer, salt baths, TCM, uh, are just something. And just when you think you're not stressed, you're like, no, I'm managing it well. Let let a professional assess you, like help you out in ways, you know. Um, they're there to support that, and it's really, really crucial. Um, and rest, napping, and time, making time available when to do it. Um, it is, it is crucial. It will pay off. Obviously, with two kids and three kids, and the mothers will tell me, it is not possible. It, it can, you, you can make it work. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's something when you are like sitting there mindlessly scrolling at the end of the time rest put that away in rest yeah yeah <laughs> okay so obviously our role as prenatal chiropractors a lot of the women who come to us in our clinic why are they coming to us they will be for optimal baby positioning um so if they've been told if the baby is breech or the baby is not in the right position if they have low line slend placentas or um, just to make sure that the baby is in a good position, growing well, moving well. Support for the mum for aches and pains and general discomfort during the pregnancy and good proper recovery post birth. Mm -hmm. um, minimizing birth trauma for mum and baby. Obviously, when the body is moving better, you have less birth trauma for the mother and the baby and the possible consequences after that. Um, breach protocol that's a really important one and I know mothers ask you all the time and you send mothers to us with breach protocol um, so breach means that the baby is upside down that the yeah. baby is not the right way down and this means that the possible route that your gynae has suggested you is that if the baby doesn't move in the right position there is a chance that you will go for a c-section if you would like to avoid that if you know that at 32 weeks onwards please go get some help ideally from a master certified chiropractor who is trained to properly assess what is going on in the pelvis what is tight where it's not moving and then shift the body to properly let nature do its course and let gravity turn that baby and there's a mis big misconception sometimes that chiropractors will move babies i was uh, just say that yeah yeah so chiropractors do not move babies i do not move babies i don't do ecbs yeah. We help the body through the breach protocol by delivering gentle adjustments. And I've got some pictures of that. This is actually the Webster's protocol and part of it. So it is <clears throat> adjusting the round ligaments and pelvis at the front. Okay. Gently. That's very, very gentle pressure. And at the back at that sacred tuberous ligament into that sacrum and down to that tailbone. Doing that, giving you the right exercises and, and stretches to follow up. And then doing that every week for a few weeks sometimes two to three times a week yeah. until that booby moves into that optimal position mm -hmm. if you're doing everything right and sticking to the protocol that we give you along with so sometimes we do chiropractic care um the inversions as well as the um, uh, uh, acupuncture at soma mm -hmm. clinic mm -hmm. so we work together quite nicely and working with them so I just see like results really, really well when all these three things combined and then you you get the birth that you want, okay? We have a really good uh, um, um, breach rate, breach birth success rate. Uh -huh. uh, we've even had um, uh, women who've given birth breach. Yeah. So with the right gynae, with the right skill set, it can be done. Say, we don't have a lot of gynees anymore that have a lot of experience in that. Yeah. Uh, in Singapore, the default is, and actually this is um, around the world, people are losing that skill, not we, the, the gynees. So yeah. um, they, they will always, the moms will always be steered by a, uh, to a C-section. So it's good to be able to get a second opinion and see if mm -hmm. find a gynee that is supportive of a breach. Yes, correct, correct. And um, obviously, if you need names and everything, um, uh, Joanna and Johanna, we can give you that. I have those names as well. We probably have the same names. <laughs> so um, please, if you feel like this is not the route that you want to go down, you're not know, off a C-section, get the help that you need. There are people out there who will help you. 
who yeah. will get you the birth that you deserve and you know just minimizing that birth trauma later on and um because it's a lot to recover from and that there's another point actually and this is i'm saying this more for first time mummies who might f find themselves in that position is that a lot of people think well one cesarean you know it doesn't matter you know but the thing is and the truth is that every subsequent cesarean and this is what most doctors here will push for because they're not supportive of VBAC, mm -hmm. vaginal after cesarean. Every, sing every subsequent cesarean carries a higher risk of placental complications yeah. and other complications. Yeah. Yes. So it's not, we you, we, you mustn't go into that, um, mm. you know, willy nilly. You have to think yeah. about it. It's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. it's not the end of the world. I'm not saying cesareans are bad. Of course. Yeah. They, they save lives and all of that, but we need yeah, to yeah, yeah. when they're needed. Um, yes, exactly. When in that in that true emergency, I think it's really, really important. And I've just been a big supporter of all that. I'm an emergency C section mummy. I know that. Yeah. And I knowing what I know, and I was like, you need to move fast, guys. Let's do this. <laughs> so I know how that happens. And and that's why I can I can relate to it when someone says, Oh, we just had a C-section. I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. What happened? And yeah. then, you know, if you, and, and we do get mothers who come to us for VBAC, yeah. for that is vaginal birth after C-section. They're like, we had this, we had that a lot of birth trauma. We want to be better prepared. Okay. Yeah. Where do you fit in in this model as a prenatal chiropractor to help and support to get our birth the next time? So because once they've been through that system a little bit as well, there's a growing community who wants to achieve that VBAC? Absolutely. Yeah. It's so important to give them the tools as well and be really prepared. I think to in order to have a vaginal birth after a cesarean, mm. you want to do the extra work and go the extra mile. And we often see that births or the previous cesarean happened because a labor stalled. Mm. Very often due to restrictions and there not being enough space for baby to move where they need to move. And I think mm. the comes in because you really can work beautifully with bringing this body into balance and making sure that we have the right communication be between the upper and the lower body you know and all of yeah. these that are so, yeah. so important or even I am going... <clears throat> sorry, sorry, go carry on. no no carry on no I was also going to say a lot of moms don't realize how previous maybe accidents and stuff they or or even what they do in their daily lives like maybe someone is always standing or we're continuously mm. we're doing very one-sided sports like a golf show tennis player or whatever yeah. how that also affect how yes. our are and therefore the ease with which we birth and, yeah. and so yeah. So I, I promise you, this was not a setup for those who are listening, but I'm going to go into how the pelvis works. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to go into how the pelvis works. Okay. So just so you can understand, if you were that visual person and everyone at this point has seen a pelvis, they have a pelvis, they know the front and back of it. But yeah. what happens is it's the nitty gritty that is happening inside of it. And it's not just a uterus growing a baby, you're done. It's there. Okay, so this is the front part of the pelvis. A lot of that bone, obviously, the white parts are the muscles, ligament, tendons that you see. Okay, so this is where in the front, if you think of the uterus as the hot air balloon, okay, that bar, uh, the, the balloon part of that hot air balloon is the uterus. That is where it's going to hold that baby. You know, the I love this analogy, so I'm going to try and get this right. So the hot air balloon has those um, cords coming, attaching to that basket, okay? Your basket is your pelvis. Okay. okay. And those cords are your muscles, ligaments, and tendons. You need everything working together mm -hmm. for the basket to, basket to stay up in the air, not yeah. topple over to one side or the other, and for constant that air to go up for that uterus, for that hot air balloon to stay up and show mm -hmm. you the big, beautiful views. Okay. Yeah. So those little cords that are hanging between the balloon and that basket are your round ligaments muscles tendons everything they come to that front okay so we do you know that crotch pain that round ligament pain that you're just being told it's normal it's part of pregnancy i promise you it is just common it is not normal yeah. when that is happening if you think of those round ligaments holding that uterus up think of it that one side is tugging on the other and now there's something 
physiologically, like anatomically, something happening that is not allowing it to be more symmetrical mm -hmm. and not working in more harmony. Okay. Then we also have the back. Okay. Because what happens at the back wall, what will happen at the um, what happens at the front will also happen at the back. We have mm -hmm. the most important ligament called the sacrotuberous ligament. Okay. Starts yeah. at the tip of that tailbone, goes all the way up to that pelvis. Mm -hmm. If there is any shift in there on one side more than the other, it will reflect at that front. Now add a modern mother who sits for a long period of time for a lot of the day carrying a toddler on one side a lot of the time as well which I'm never going to stop you from carrying a toddler really? or doing that it is what you need to do but imagine that stress that you're kind of putting on there and what's happening also at the same time to your hip flexor muscles okay so with that Webster's protocol now we are shifting and making the ligaments and the muscles and the tendon at ease so they stop doing this tug of war so that basket, so that uterus can move the way it needs to do, it can move the way it needs to move. The baby can grow in a more freer space and then more, more, move around in a more optimal position. And when the time comes for birth, ideally, when everything, all this works, you don't have a lot of that back labor that a lot of people say. You know, have you heard of that, Johanna? Yeah. I'm getting a lot of that back pain. Okay? Yeah. That's when that sacrotuberous ligament is tugging on one side more than the other. And the sacrum is not moving and allowing that baby to go down. And in yeah. your case, I tell me if um, you, I don't know if you get this or if you've heard baby comes down and goes back up again, baby mm -hmm. comes down and goes back up again. It's because of what the sacrotuberous ligament is doing and how the pubic synthesis is also getting in the way, which is that uh, pubic bone area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we really need to focus on, you know, how well that pelvis is moving, where those blockages are and how to release them. And that's why breach protocol, the Repsis protocol does a beautiful job of that. And that's mm -hmm. where, what we do. Um, obviously when that pelvis moves, this is a slide to tell you all your pelvic floor muscles. I hope anyone who's watching now, they know that pelvic floor muscles do not push the baby out. Okay. So it is pelvic floor muscles. If they move well, they will move out of the way to let the uterus do its job. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So because there was a big consumption, like, oh, pelvic floor muscles, they will be like stronger pelvic floor muscles. They will push the baby out. They move out of the way for uterus to do the job, for contraction to do the job, and then the baby slides out of the birth canal. So when that pelvis moves well, when that sacrum and that tailbone moves well, everything relaxes better mm -hmm. and as a chiropractor the basis of me being a chiropractor is calming that nervous system down enough so you can do that because when the baby is growing this can a lot of it, like negative things can happen right our body shifts our body changes and we get a lot of that general ache and pain and we don't know what has moved so um yeah that's if, if that makes sense amazing yeah no yeah. it's Good explanation for sure yeah the psoas muscle as well yes. i think that the psoas plays such an important role because it's the biggest muscle in our back and it connects the upper body to the lower body and it actually goes through the pelvis through so the pelvis, yes. moms who carry a lot of fear and tension tra previous trauma as well mm. it will have a very tight psoas and yes. that restricts the space that the baby finds as well yes Oh, Correct, it's because it's growing in front and that's where it's under it's that deep belly muscle um and women then who are sitting down for a longer period of time then we're sitting like this and it creates that short tight mm -hmm. muscle rather than a long beautiful muscle and it gets really really tight so with the breach protocol comes a psoas release as well and then once you get off the table and everything that everything just moves the belly looks just more comfortable not so tight you can breathe a bit better um, and the baby is just kick a lot more at the end of the day, which is always a good thing. Okay, great. Yeah. Made some other stuff to ask you later. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, obviously, so we know LOA is um, the best ideal position. If you have heard of it or maybe your guides have mentioned it in the past, LOA pretty much means left occiput anterior. 
this is the position. Um, so on your screens, what you're seeing is obviously the right and the left side and the baby being on your left, being head down with their chin tucked in. It is really important that the baby comes out chin tucked in and not chin out facing the world. Okay. And this is what we teach in detail in our classes. And we demonstrate it because you wouldn't believe how it changes the diameter that is presenting in the pelvis. Yes. So if a baby is constantly there, there, and sometimes if a baby is in a not, not so optimal position, it's actually the labor contractions that push the head the other way. And then we have so much more um, diameter presenting and therefore a much more difficult labor. Yeah. So not, not just actually with the labor, but the consequences of like later on. And that's where birth trauma for the baby comes in. And yeah. because I am that pediatric chiropractor, I ask, how was the birth? What position did the baby come out? Was it chin down or chin up? Yeah. Chin up already tells me that your baby's having difficulty um, breastfeeding, uh -huh. difficulty latching, and they're arching their back a lot. And yeah. we hear that a lot. So there's a reason LOA is the most optimal position with their chin down, because this at this point, the widest part of the head needs to exit and not the um, other way. So this way and the head being on that left and then the shoulders coming out is the most ideal position that you want them to be in um obviously people still deliver op babies um yeah. and it, it can be done it is done um and uh, there's nothing wrong with it it's just uh, uh, it can be um there's just a lot of trauma involved for, for both the mother and the baby and how you recover from it and what you do for the baby and yourself later after that OP birth can just really change the dynamics of like what that early motherhood, like nursing journey looks like for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So because LOA is really important and when that doesn't happen, this takes me into why babies should get checked. Okay. <laughs> so we have our prenatal mothers, our well, pregnant mothers who let's say if they've had a difficult birth, and um, they've had a breech baby. If they've, um, if at any point they were, uh, if the baby was breech for a long, long time, and um, then, um, or if they had an OP birth, if they had a emergency C-section, and more importantly, if they had any um, instruments used. So whether it be um, your yeah. suck um, vacuum or forceps or um, you know, like if they needed like immediate NICU admission. So a lot of the times like babies will come to us for that birth trauma. They have the underlying birth trauma, which translate into their daily life, like excessive crying, colic, reflux, latching issues on the breast. They don't like being on the tummy. They don't like being on their back. They only want to be held a lot of the times. And it is different to, oh, my baby is being fussy and they like to be carried. So yeah. I, I say that like carefully. Um, mm -hmm. head preferences so that's like torticollis where then that can be a little bit more um, tilted and rotated to one side and they have flat heads okay and obviously digestive problems constipation gassy um, I do want to touch on there is a growing um, community uh, around the world and in Singapore that yeah. is starting to think and I've, I've been here long enough to think like I've seen that transition happen that oh my gosh my baby came out look they are so strong they're holding their neck up already uh-huh okay i promise you your baby is not strong there is tension in the baby there was possibly birth trauma they should not be holding your neck up straight out of the room amen i just had a conversation yesterday with uh, our uh, one of our best ibclc's here yeah. in dr maithili i'm sure you know yeah, yeah love her yeah and I've had two or three clients in a row who told me their baby is turning over in in, in week three. Oh That's my God, no. And, and then she said to me, this is a sign of torticollis, of tightness on the one side. Mm -hmm. They're not uh, they're not actually, you know, strong. We shouldn't be celebrating that. We but... shouldn't be celebrating that. They should not be rolling over, guys. Rolling over comes at 16 months, okay? It's a concern. If your baby's holding, like they should be floppy a little bit. You know, they have that little flop that you need to support them. You need to hold their neck. They shouldn't be really, really tight. They shouldn't be arching their back. 
if you've had that OP birth or any instrument birth where there was suction or uh, forceps used, that can create a lot of trauma on the top part of the neck. And there's a study and there's a really, really good study that uh, the, the kids checked at birth, 83% of them had that upper cervical, upper neck trauma because of the way they were birth, uh, the birth process went. And yeah. that led to a lot of the latching difficulties, sleeping difficulties, fussiness, arching their backs. Okay. So the best time to get checked would be after birth. Look, get your baby checked, you know, just make sure everything went okay. And especially if you are, a lot of these, a lot of mothers want to breastfeed these days. And there's a great, like, you know, they want to be successful at it. And we are here to support you that if you are experiencing breastfeeding difficulties, even as a first time mother, that pain that you're experiencing, that fussiness, that arching of the back, that it won't latch on, it is not normal right now, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, we want to be able to support you get to your goals. And that does involve a thorough checkup, a thorough history of how that birth went and what's happening in the baby's nervous system, especially on that top part of the neck and how that baby came into the world and how they're perceiving this bed bag world. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. I'm going to be a little bit facetious here. Okay, okay. We, go, might, go, go. we might have moms on the call now uh, who are pregnant mm. to give birth and they might be thinking, oh my God, what am I doing? Am I going to cause a lot of trauma yeah. by giving birth vaginally? But can we talk about, you know, the difference between a C-section and a vaginal birth and that some of that stress that a baby goes yeah. through is actually very beneficial yeah. rather than damaging them long term yeah yeah so first of all obviously if you yeah you know what it's a great question I, I I I'm not in the business of like scaring people or anything but I get like really passionate about it and I'm like wait let me tell you what's going on so if you have given birth as a c-section it is okay it is not your fault it is happened but how what the future for the baby looks like if you're experiencing difficulty you know get the help if you feel like you need the help and if you're pregnant, um, when, when that na natural um, labor and delivery process starts, those contractions and actually going through that birth canal, that stress is really, really important because that squeezing effect on their um, head um, and on their neck and everything is important to build those sutures, to create those neurons, those are the brain synapses to happen to activate a lot of the muscles and um, and then how they will feed and grow in the outside world. Mm -hmm. So that squeezing of the brain, that OA position, that, um, uh, that chin down position is done for that reason. And when um, versus a C-section where that cut is made down, the baby's head is still down and that... Um, when the doctors are pulling their neck out without mm -hmm. that squeeze is very different. Yeah. Okay? They're putting those external forces on that C-section and pulling that head out. Okay. Which is a lot of stress on that little baby's neck. And I know that there are certain doctors here. And if you're going down a plan and off a plan C-section due to any medical history whatsoever, I would like you to talk to that doctor. Are you going to use forceps in the C-section? Yes. Because a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Yes. So if they are, I advise, have, have a chat, have a chat. Like why, what, ask your Hannah for help. Um, I'm not the best person over here to talk about like their birthing alternatives right now, uh, but get the help because I know that trauma that forceps put on the little spine where the baby coming out is not ideal. We have a, and we have a lot of doctors now, not a lot of doctors, but the doctors we like working with, they they just don't use forceps, yeah. you know. So only if it's a you know a true you know emergency where there's no other other yes. way. We I've never seen I don't see forceps very often. I'm very lucky, but yeah. that's because I work with the the right uh, doctors. Hello. So Ayman, we have a question yes. in the chat actually, which is very. Yeah. Thank you for asking this how do you get baby to be in an loa position with the chin down it's not like we can control it or can we yeah um, well movement okay so no 
No, you can't control it. But also when everything in the body is moving well, the baby will know in the position that they need to go down in. Yeah. Okay. So, and that comes down to the, ex, you know, staying active, making sure the body is moving in the right position, um, that you are st- like your, uh, your body and your pelvis is a lot more aligned. So there's enough space for that baby to move down in that proper position. When, if the pelvis is tighter on one side more than the other, if you have history of like injuries, car accidents or any other previous trauma or any even history of low back pain then that stops you like there's a reason that if you have history of low back pain it could be affecting how the baby is on that left or in that or a position so wow. uh, there's ways of encouraging with, with like pilates yoga exercises but let a chiropractor physio osteo check you out and like really address the concerns that they are because as I say, like when you're pregnant, muscles and ligaments, tendons, they all move and they can affect that baby and that pelvis in a more like negative way. So yeah. um, moving in the right way and letting the professional bring you more ease can will allow that baby to move in that LOA position. But I will add something here because we have some babies who are in a perfect LOA position all throughout their pregnancy. And then when labor starts, they move to an OP position or a different position. I always say babies will go where they find the most space. Yes. So try and do then in birth as doulas, Mm -hmm. we help you move your body in a way. So we try and determine where is that baby? How can we create more space for that baby to make it easier for them to move through the birth canal? And this is where I always say, If you, I am not vilifying pain relief methods, but being upright and active in labor is going to go a long way to help that baby navigate the birth canal. You know, so if she's lying on her back because she's having an induction and she's on an epidural and all of that, we can still do a lot as doulas to help with peanut balls and mobilization and all these things. But the baby is going to have an easier time when a mom can be upright and mobile, moving around and doing the right exercises or the right movements at the right time to get that baby to rotate to where they need to go. Yes, Yes. agree. (laughs) With working in the bathroom, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely agree. They can be LOA whole time and then they do OP or they they, they do that whole yo-yoing. Yes. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And when that yo-yo, that's it's it's that sacral tuberous ligament, and it's that cubic bone at the front because it's tugging on it, and then they will go down. Amazing. Mm, yeah. Really. Um, okay. Um. You know that's, what? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ma- we have time Are for you. Your- yeah, but, I think we could, we did good on time as well. Absolutely, mummies. Um. Absolutely, or daddies. I don't even know if we, if that is on the call, yeah. but your do, do put your questions in the chat in the meantime i have other stuff that i can talk yeah. about your questions take priority yeah. but the first one will be because i had this mom earlier or yesterday contact me and she says what do i do my baby has reflux um how what can help them can i use homeopathy and so on and i actually said i mean obviously homeopathy is a great modality as well but i said do consider getting cairo mm. uh, practice here for your baby so can you talk a little bit about what reflux is Mm. and how it manifests in babies how do I know that my baby has that and how does chiropractic help with that yeah okay so okay it's a big topic (laughs) it's a big topic that's so so complex it is exactly it is a very complex topic and without like knowing a lot of like what happened at birth again Mm -hmm. is it actually reflux or is it overdiagnosed because reflux is so overdiagnosed when when nothing fits you have reflux (laughs) okay or the new one a lot of the times that i hear is when nothing fits you have silent reflux Mm -hmm. okay okay so with obviously the babies that when born a full time and i think we're not they're not like adults right they cannot control that little flap in their little stomach at the bottom and they have a little bit more of that immature digestive system and things can come back up you know they've had a feed and it comes back up and 
depends on like what type of vomiting that they're doing is that that's when I'm concerned is your baby doing a merlion every time that they feed that's a definite concern what happened at birth do we need at this point medical intervention or do we need to see what's happening in the baby's nervous system where that tension is and how can we really release that yeah or is it eh, is this a little bit every now and then when they lay on their stomach and then they're okay but if your baby is significantly in discomfort arching their back throwing up okay I can understand like why it would be a concern and that is usually reflux and that body tension and that stress from the trauma can look very similar okay in those early days okay so I I I feel like with these kids almost almost hand in hand when I start digging deeper they be like yeah that's what they're doing they're arching their back or they're crying when they are pass uh, like are passing gas or poop or their latch is not right. And that's why they're getting the reflux. So how I work is I will say, I agree with you. Homeopath is a big, I'm a big fan of it. If anyone knew what happened yesterday, I lost my voice completely. <laughs> and I had horrible cough. We almost had to cancel this talk. I didn't have it. And I, I go back to homeopathy because that is that is my roots okay like I grew up on homeopathy so I know how it works and I'm like okay and that I am I am able to speak and talk to you guys because of homeopathy okay um so that as well as get checked um get checked either an osteopath or a chiropractor can help you okay to for check that body tension before you have to resort to any medication or anything whatsoever I say this with a grain of salt and at the uh, the medication for reflux is actually not, it's, it, it's overprescribed and it's not needed at this point. And actually, how the, studies show um, that it only helps in like 50% of cases anyway. Yeah. Yes. Fix them, and, but this yeah. often not. You know. Yeah. And if you're putting on, putting them on a proton pump inhibitors and all of that, actually it it's not working. It only works for that short time because due to of the other physiological reasons and it will come back a few weeks later and unfortunately you will always be in that cycle of trying to be like what came first okay yeah. so go down the holistic route first and i and i'm saying this as a mother myself who see this a lot of the times in the clinic go down the holistic route first before resorting to any medication and then go back to this get your latch checked if you are breastfeeding Mm -hmm. um, get get the baby checked for any oral tether ties. Make sure that the mouth is moving well. Make sure that they have no body tension and how they're how they're functioning on that daily level. What get that checked out? Yeah, the yeah. other thing, uh, flow. So, um, how fast the baby is drinking their milk? Yes. From yes. Breast. Yeah. Yes. Really strong letdown. Yes. It's a bottle fed baby that is just being, having you know yeah. milk going into them and so on yeah and that's when i'm saying that's why i say check the mouth check, uh, get, get the mouth checked out um because for oral tie issues if there are any then the baby is unable to lift and control that tongue properly if the if the baby's compensating in the cheeks and the mouth those little blisters if you're seeing on the baby's lips those are not normal okay um um that's not dehydration that's not just baby you know like there's a few there's a few missing pieces in the puzzle so if you want to dm me if you're listening mum, i'm happy to walk you through some troubleshoot them some things yeah and obviously under the youtube video we'll then uh, post your contact details yeah. and, and so mom can get it mums can get in touch mm. mm. okay there's a mom asking so even when i feel no back pain or pelvic pain in pregnancy is it still beneficial for me to go to a chiropractor for birth and labor prep yes yes just for general aches and pregnant general aches and pains to get the body more comfortable more prepared get you breathing a little bit better um and bring you again that rest and digest rather than fight or flight um i uh, i i'm 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 a working mother myself. I am always fight or flight. And I have one kid. And I remember being um, pregnant myself with my first. So there can be a lot of fight or flight um, response happening in our body. So if you don't have any history of low back pain, that's great. Go to the chiropractor, get it checked out to see how the body is moving and how they can support you in that birth process. 
get yeah. that body ready. Yeah. So you have a better, be, uh, good chances of recovering better, faster and more smoothly without any um, issues later on. Yeah. Because I think often we're so used to our bodies feeling the way they do and we have ways we sit and walk and so on. And we're not actually aware of that we, of the fact that we have restrictions or that we have imbalances because our bodies have a very clever way of compensating for yes. Yes. we have, right? And then we might actually not know. Yeah, yeah. because I always say that the body's on your side. The body will make you feel comfortable. You're like, a little pain here? Fine, I'll, I sit like this a lot. You know, yeah. like it will just shift things around without thinking, yeah, that's just normal part of life. Oh, I had a little bit of ache or so. Yeah, the body, the body will take care of it at a cost of like compensations. Exactly. Mm. All right. Um, what was I going to ask you as well? Oh, you mentioned NICU babies earlier. So mm. NICU, for those of you who don't know, the term is um, <laughs> natal intensive care unit. Yeah. And so these are the babies that need a little bit of extra help after they are born. This can be because they're not breathing very well, because they're not um, whatever, any, any concerns there. Yeah. Now, NICU is a very stressful place. Yes. You know, you have those babies and some of them are in there for a good week. And some babies who are born very prematurely, they might be in there for weeks. And this really fires up their nervous system. And I think these babies are the ones that have a really hard time being chilled and relaxed at home when they come home because they're used to all this drama around them, oh, right? Wow. Yes, yes, so, yes. yes. In that case, and then obviously the sympathetic nervous system, that also influences our colicky babies and all of that. The babies that don't they, that they don't sleep very well, that mm. can't, right? Yeah. 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 So NICU babies again, like it can be a multiple reasons of why the baby ended up in NICU, and um, again, just to calm that nervous system down, take them out of that fight flight bring them to rest and digest so they can heal and adapt better okay mm -hmm. they have a long they have a long journey to heal from what they've just been through okay and especially so if you a small example of this is um uh, the mother who had a premature birth and her baby was at 35 weeks and they were in NICU for five weeks and she was on um machines and ventilators and stuff so she had a lot of that head preference because they could only pump in from one side so five weeks of neck looking like this creates a lot of that stress and added stress from the premature birth a c-section taking the baby out and adds a lot of stress and flat spots of the head now um so now we need to look at what the head shape is going to look like we're addressing plagiocephaly. For those of you who don't know, plagiocephaly is, is if the, your, your child has um, a preference on one side more than the other, they can um, have some flat spots. A fancy name of that is just plagiocephaly. Um, it is not normal anymore. There's enough evidence now to kind of show that um, after like three to five mm a difference asymmetrically, it is not normal anymore. And it's showing a lot of um, gross motor, fine motor delays, speech developmental delays as well, as well as delayed milestones. Yeah. Um, so um, so we, we are now going, okay, this baby needs to rest and digest. They need to feed at the breast. So their mouth needs to move better. They yeah. need to poop better because they've been so constipated and um, um, their little digestive systems have, may have gone through a lot of like medications and antibiotics. And we also at the same time need to bring enough movement in the neck mm -hmm. so the plagia part is also sorted. Interesting. And you know what I see a lot recently? I Recently, the confinement centers have become very popular. Yes. In these places, when you look at the nursery, the babies are always being put on their backs with the head to one side, yeah. and they ever alternate them. And every one of these clients then had a baby that had torticollis mm. issues because of it, yeah. and sort of think, oh my god, like this could be so is so easily preventable. So you mummies at home as well, I always say to my moms in the postnatal visit is, do you 
rec do you notice that there's a preference for one side? Do you pay attention to how your baby lies and alternating the what the the you know yeah. which direction they look in? I guess breastfeeding does that automatically yes. because and, it yeah. around, yes. but it will be very often the parent has a preference for one side because woman and hand. Yeah. So, so I will add to that. Um, actually, we do ask: Do they prefer a breast over the other? Yes. Okay. So if you or your friend or anyone, you're like, oh yeah, they always feed on the right better. That means they cannot turn their neck the other way to feed on the other side, and that shows their stress on their neck, which is stopping them from moving their neck um, from one side to the other. Um, yeah. um, I do want to add to that. Obviously, um, I'm telling you how it all moves. The the pressure that I'm putting on a baby's neck and the rest of the spine is pretty much how I would check the I do have an avocado uh, is how I, I I would check the firmness of an avocado off an avocado okay oh. babies newborns um even um little infants and like toddler up until toddler age they don't have a lot of those big muscles tendons ligaments to protect their spines so we don't need a lot of that force it's mm -hmm. almost looking like a lot of that body work with gentle pressure yeah. um and very much like almost like a little baby massage situation yeah. with light finger pressure. So what you are seeing on YouTube or where there's a lot of crrr, like cracks and this and that, we don't. I I don't do that. No, I, we don't do that. If anyone is doing that, let me know so I can report them. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> I have another question, and yeah. this uh, related to you just said it earlier to milestones. Mm. So I find it really important. I mean, obviously you go to your pediatrician and you have them checked and all of that, but I don't think the checks there are thorough in the way a chiropractor does it. Yeah. Just is that baby developing? Have they lost, lost their reflexes? You know, things like that. And and then teach the parents, I'm guessing, mm. oh, that's what I would be hoping for as a parent. Teach the parent, how can we support if we find, you know, a preference for this one side, they're rolling over to that side, but not the other. How can we support that development? Is yes. that something that you do? And yes. So yes, actually, we do do that because our big focus, my big focus is obviously pediatric chiropractic. So my focus is on that developmental milestone side as well. And it is because of the reason, because of the lack of um, information available. Uh, when should they roll over? When are they crawling? Are they crawling properly? Or did they skip crawling? So mm -hmm. milestones are there for a reason. Yes, by all means, every child is, is different. And I respect that. There's a window where they meet those milestones. And yeah. there's a definite age where they, it's called a delayed milestone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is such a thing called skipped milestone. Okay. I don't like babies skipping milestones because yeah. every milestone is there for a reason to build onto the next one okay mm -hmm. so like you lose your startle reflex you know the baby uh, when they're born they have like a bit of a startle reflex from light and sound it goes away for that reason and it integrates in their brain for a reason for them to comfortably roll over mm -hmm. that side lying that rolling over that looks like into creeping Okay. And then it looks like into crawling. Crawling can look like it can look very different in different households here. Proper crawling is all hands and knees on all fours. Yeah. Commando crawling, one leg crawling, scooting on your bum is not actually crawling. And your baby may be missing a milestone, which affects them later on. Yeah. It is all on. So, we we do check that we check um where they're sitting at milestones and how to help as well if they're not rolling over then we give you exercises and helping um how to uh, how to help them roll over if they're only doing a lot of commando crawling what is going on if they're doing one-sided crawling that we see a lot in breech babies because the head of the ball and socket joint of the hip is not developed properly of the position that the baby was in in a long time. Um, especially so going back to that birth position and the baby in utero, if the baby was breech for a very, very long time, I want to know what kind of breech it was because that affects the way that the hips are developing. And if now they are not crawling, is it a problem in the hip and do we need to um, get that checked properly? Yeah. So it's just, just a tension, a blockage and regular adjustments and some exercises at home with obstacle courses and 
health can solve that. Amazing. So, yeah. mm. Okay, we're coming to the end of our coffee morning. Um, I want to be respectful of your time because I know you're going back to the clinic. Uh, mummies, if there are any um, closing questions, please let us know. Yeah. Otherwise, how do you, how can people find you? Okay, so I am on uh, Dr. Amen Cairo on Instagram. Um, uh, I will send some um, information about my clinic and everything in the next couple of days to you, to you, Hannah, uh, because uh, our clinic is possibly changing location due to clinic building renovating. So uh, once I have that, I will let you know as soon as possible. But if you want to contact me, I am on Instagram at Dr. Amen Cairo. It's A-Y-M-U-N Cairo. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely hear that. Um, and then obviously if you have any questions, I will also put it in the, in the WhatsApp groups and I will send out the video as well. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, get in touch with them. Um, one question that I always get is, um, is it, is it like a, a one, um, sorry, a pay as you go kind of situation? Mm. Do I come for one appointment or typically what do you see with, I mean, obviously it depends on the condition, but yeah. what do you see do you need to see people you know for a a, a specific period of time yeah. or or can it be just a one-off treatment as well um so depending on what you what your goal is okay so for breach protocol no it's not a one-off visit obviously we need to send and see them for a few weeks at a time uh for a few uh, for a few it's up to two to three times a week for a few weeks until they give birth, just to kind of make sure that all the adjustments are holding the baby into the most optimal position. So we do have um, like that. Um, uh, pre pre otherwise, in a normal, um, a no complications, no medical history pregnancy, a lot of women just for their general well-being, they will stick to that once a week as a maintenance up until they give birth. Babies, again, are different depending what your goal is. If you're having latching difficulties and your baby is very um, uh, fussy, not sleeping, all of that is going on, then they will um, uh, they will see me a few times a week um, uh, for a number of weeks um, and alongside with other help from like an IBCLC, a pediatric dentist if it's needed just to get mm -hmm. to the goal that we need to. Uh, we always um, set up like little progress check-ins to kind of see where the baby's at. So we're helping you at the right place um, and not um, serving you for what the purpose is. Yeah. yeah. So I it's hardly ever a one-time visit because any problem that is persisting, it's not just, it hasn't come overnight. Yeah. Mm. So it takes a while to resolve as well. Yes. I love that we have this big community here in Singapore with a lot of specialists in pregnancy and in baby care. And there are so many different modalities that can, that can be helpful. And it's really good to be able to cross refer as well and, and yeah. have specialists on board and have a, a team to yes. take care of you and your, yes. and your baby. Yeah. All right. Any parking, parking, any parting, <laughs> parting words of wisdom? Oh, parting words of wisdom. Ah. Oh. Informed decisions, yes. make informed decisions when it comes to birth, delivery, and raising a child. I am a big advocate for it. Just because the man or a woman in the white coat said so, yeah. um, please make informed decisions, okay? There's a growing evidence um, that how you will birth will affect the rest of their childhood and adulthood. Um, so yeah and conversations and there is help available so ask questions yeah and then obviously for Diana and myself we are happy to we all we don't just do birth support but we do consults as well where we can just meet you the one time and we mm. through all your options and yeah. sure that you understand what you're getting into and so on so we are super happy to support you in that way as well yes. Yeah, thank you for doing all the work that you do. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Eamon. It was so great to have you. Thank uh, you. Informative, really loved it and had something for everyone, you know, for the mummies who are still pregnant, for the mummies who are recovering from birth, and then for the moms with their little yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I hope that a lot of people will seek you out. And yeah, I hope so. thank you, mummies, for joining us on the call. It's always so nice to have you in person uh, rather than you watching it later. But, yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having me. If you have yeah. any questions, please shoot them my way. Thank you. Amazing. I hope right. you all have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye-bye.